Okay guys, here's another video of a few parts and basic tools that I think everybody should be carrying with them on the truck. Uh, lease operators, company drivers, owner operators, the whole show. Owner operators, you guys are probably going to want to expand on this stuff to include the you know, radiator hoses and stuff like that. But whatever, I'm primarily talking about uh, you company drivers out there. You guys are just getting started in this industry that might not have any other experience or insight into some important stuff to carry with you. Um, this is primarily stuff that's really simple equipment, uh, you know, tools, really simple, basic parts that you can get from your mechanic or pretty much any truck stop. And it's really important stuff because this kind of stuff will help get you off the side of the road It'll help get you out of the truck stop parking lot uh, so that you can get out there and start trucking and continue making money. A lot of you guys are getting paid by the mile, and you guys are the ones I'm trying to help. All right, so let's take a quick look at this stuff. I've made a list. We're going to go down that list. I'll talk about some of it. Some of it's pretty self-explanatory, but let's check it out real quick. Uh, i get my fingers out of the way here. Okay. Here's your tools and parts list. I'll pan out of it real quick. Uh, I think that's the end of it right here. Hold that for a few seconds so you guys can screenshot it or uh, whatever you're gonna do. Pause it, uh, write it down, whatever you're gonna do, however you do it, I don't know. Uh, anyways, all right, let's get through this list here. Air fittings. For at least your 3 8 inner diameter brake hose. That is this hose right here. Okay. This is your 3 8 inner diameter. Inner diameter means the hole inside this hose is 3 8 of an inch wide. Okay. Go back and see Daddy. She's wanting to take off on me, and I gotta get busy. All right, babe. Let me see you being a good girl. Probably not because you're a little felon, huh? All right. That's my cat. Sorry, guys. Can't edit that out. My wife came in the door there because Missy was acting up outside. Okay. So, anyway. Your air fittings for at least your 3 8 inside diameter ID brake hose. That's your air fitting right there. And I just made another video not long ago about how to repair this brake line if you discover a flat spot or a hole or whatever the case it is that you need to repair this brake line uh, this is your end-to-end -end connection this brass connection here check out that video um, it's kind of long-winded a little bit maybe but check that video out carry you know half a dozen of these I think I carry like two dozen of these right here because I do drop and hook all the time um, pulling doubles so there's no shortage of opportunities for me to replace or repair brake, brake lines also carry your air hose 3 8 air hose again that's this stuff here this is your air hose that has the blue glad hands on it the red glad hands on it that hook up your trailer that's that 3 8 of an inch inner diameter air hose Okay. Also, in that video, I show uh, two crescent wrenches. That's how you install this part to replace that or to repair that airline. Okay. Brake pins. Again, there's another video that I just did uh, my last day off a week ago, I think, uh, about where those brake pins are and how important they are. Here it is right here. This is that clevis pin here and that split pin, that cotter pin. If I can get this thing to focus, which I don't know how to do it. Check out that other video though, if you're interested. Carry a small baggie of these, a little Ziploc baggie or whatever. I've probably got 50 of these things because I'm always dropping and hooking and I don't trust other drivers who drop that last trailer, drop that last set. I don't trust them to have looked at that uh, braking system. If I pick up a set of trailers and these things are missing in that brake in that brake system. 
I want to go back up to the glove box of my truck, pull these pins out, and replace those pins. I want my brakes to work. Okay, so that's brake pins. Brake cleaner. While you're down there inspecting your braking system, and you're making sure these pins are in it, you're making sure the snap ring is in at the top of the slack adjuster, you're making sure that everything is adjusted correctly. Also, look at your drum and your rotor and make sure they're not greasy, oily, uh, got rocks in them, whatever. What you don't want is a well-lubricated brake, okay? <laughs> don't look right now, but a well-lubricated brake is not going to do you any good when you're coming down that hill. And you need to slow down. So, what I carry in the truck, now I'm not in the truck now, I'm in my garage, but I carry brake and electrical motor cleaner in the truck. Go to any auto parts store, go to any truck stop, they're going to sell you some brake cleaner, okay? All it is is a degreaser, WD-40 will work, um, alcohol will work, whatever. Uh, carry some brake cleaner with you because... If you pull into a service station and have your equipment greased and lubed, believe it or not, some of these guys in those service bays will drop a big old glob of grease right on your brake drum. Get up underneath that sucker and make sure they didn't do that. Don't grease, don't, you know, don't lubricate your braking system for crying out loud. Okay, moving on. Glad hand seals. Everybody knows what a glad hand seal is. They're either blue, black, or red. All three colors, they're just glad hand seals. It doesn't matter the color. Um, I tend to use the black seals on all the glad hands because the black seals are a softer rubber. So they mash together better and give me that better seal. Um, <clears throat> the red and the blue ones, I don't know what the heck those things are made out of, but... They don't really squish together very well. Um, so carry a handful of those, especially you drop and hook guys, especially the drop and hook guys. Uh, don't trust the last driver that was uh, towing that trailer. Don't trust that dude. If, if he pulled that glad hand off and he hadn't set his brake yet, that glad hand seal could have just flown right off of there. You think he cares? Hell no, he doesn't care. He doesn't care. He's not going to go looking around in the middle of the night for that crap. All right. Carry a light tester. This is kind of one of those crapshoot things. I, uh, meaning, I don't know if you guys are going to, you know, get into the whole electrical system and try to fix your lights and all that other stuff or not. I don't know. Uh, for me, electrical systems are, <laughs> they tend to be the bane of my existence. I hate working on lights. I hate working on electrical stuff. Uh, not the best at it, but with a light tester and some black electrical tape or liquid tape, I love it. Um, with that, I can generally fix the problem. If there's a problem with the lights, when I hook up a set of, of doubles, uh, I can generally get it figured out. So, you know, for four or five bucks, six bucks, uh, get yourself a light tester, especially if you know how to use it. Um, and that is going to help you get back on the road. Uh, black electrical tape. That's pretty much just this stuff right here. Everybody knows what black electrical tape is. I like this stuff really well. This is black electrical tape, but it's liquid tape. So when you've got those connections, those wires that are really, really close together, and you can't really run a freaking roll of black electrical tape around them, this liquid tape is just a dream i love it uh it's just a brush inside here and you just brush it onto your electrical connections come here stupid pen okay zip ties man if you ain't carrying zip ties you ain't trucking <laughs> zip ties are a dream look in, in another video i just shot uh i used two zip ties in explaining and demonstrating how to protect an airline from premature wear and tear when that airline is rubbing and vibrating uh, and just wearing out on, um, you know, like the frame of a dolly or whatever. Um, okay, so carry zip ties, man. 
zip ties are going to see you through a lot of things. Uh, it, it, I mean, it's kind of like baling wire. It may not fix everything, but it will get you moving and get you back to the service station. Okay. Fluids in a funnel. <laughs> Guys, these are big, big engines. It's big equipment. It needs fluids. Um, you're looking at engine oil. You should be carrying wiper fluid, you know, windshield wiper fluid, the bug spray. You should be carrying coolant. You should be carrying hub oil. And you should be carrying power steering fluid. Hub oil and power steering fluid, those things come in liter bottles, I believe. They don't take a lot of space it, uh, underneath your sleeper or underneath your bunk. They don't take a lot of space in your toolbox. They don't take up a lot of space. And you're not going to use them much. But when you pick up a trailer, uh, you could very well find that it's a little bit low on hub oil. Uh, power steering fluid. Again, hey, look. If your truck leaks power steering fluid uh, and you're driving around on one of these newer trucks, don't run out of power steering fluid, man. you got a 20-inch steering wheel. The older trucks... Uh, they had a 25 inch steering wheel and no power steering fluid. The reason why they had 25 inch steering wheels because they didn't have power steering. You lose power steering in one of these newer trucks. Good luck, man. Good luck. You better be a big strong dude to get that thing to turn. Uh, so carry these fluids. Carry a funnel so that you can add these fluids when you need to. You should be doing pre-trip inspections that have you pop in the hood all the time. Uh, paper towels, kind of goes without saying. Uh, clean your funnels out. When you're putting uh, power steering fluid into your truck, and then you throw that funnel back underneath the sleeper, and then the next time you use that funnel, it's got a bunch of power steering fluid in it, and you go to add engine oil. Um don't do that just don't do that i'm not going to tell you what's going on with with all the mechanics and everything else you're not working on trucks but don't do that wipe your freaking funnel out every time you use it um don't add engine oil into your engine with a dirty dusty nasty funnel that's got a bunch of dust and dirt and cuss words and everything else in it don't do that use a clean funnel so paper towels mandatory Fuses. Fuses are important because that's part of your electrical system. You don't have to be an electrical engineer to understand that your fuses need to work. They need to be good fuses. And a lot of your, a lot of your electrical pr uh, problems are going to be just because you blew a fuse. Uh, I carry 30 amp fuses. I will replace a 10 amp fuse with a 30 amp fuse just to get that sucker uh, working again. And then I'll tell the mechanic about it, and he put he can put the appropriate size fuse in it. But I just carry 30s. A flashlight. Pretty much goes without saying. If you're doing pre-trip inspections, uh, sometimes you're going to be doing a pre-trip inspection in the middle of the night. Get up underneath that equipment and make sure you can see what you're doing. Make sure you can see everything that you're looking for. Cracks and welds, bra uh, miss missing brake pins, whatever you're doing during the daylight, you should be able to see it at night with a flashlight. Duh. Carry a sharp knife or a multi-tool. I carry both. Uh, and I just dropped my ink pen. Carry a sharp knife or a multi-tool. Those are going to be your two most useful tools. Uh, so make sure they're sharp and keep them with you. Tire pressure hose and a gauge. Uh, I'll do another little clip here to show you exactly what those things are. But for all you guys doing drop and hook stuff especially, don't trust the driver that just dropped that trailer off because he could have dropped that thing off with flat tires. You don't have to tug that wagon all the way into a service shop to get air put in the tire. If you have a tire pressure hose or a tire fill hose and a gauge, you can do the same stuff from your red glad hand. And uh, I'll show you how that's done here in a minute. And that's pretty much it, guys. That's a basic list 
Uh, it looks like a long list when you put it on paper, but when you start putting that stuff in the toolbox or underneath your sleeper bed, it's not really a whole lot of stuff. Um, I learned a long time ago, man, you just can't carry everything you're going to need, but you can carry what you need to get you off the fog line, and that's important. So put this list together, carry it with you, get yourself rolling, and start making that money by the mile. Have a blast, guys.